Welcome to Samara Training Services. Welcome to our Occupational Health and Safety Tutorials. This session is about construction and in particular about excavation. What is an excavation? An excavation is a hole dug into the ground. But when we stand on the top of the ground, we don't actually know what's underneath us. We may think we know what's underneath us, but we don't really know until we dig it up. There may be some surprises. They could be pipes. They might be water pipes, or they might be sewer pipes. They might be electric cables. Electric cables are dangerous for the voltage, and fiber optic cables are expensive when you dig them up. The ground may not be what we expect. It may be really hard rock. We may need to bring special equipment in to break through the hard rock. There may be groundwater, that's water in the ground. As you dig the hole, water seeps into the bottom of the excavation, making it soft. There may be voids, voids are holes in the ground. Holes may have things living in them. Holes may collapse. The ground may be unsuitable for excavating. It may have running sand or other material that is too soft to hold up the sides of the excavation. And there may be wadis. If the wadi comes, the excavation can fill up with water. So we need to think about these things to excavate safely. We're going to look at five steps before we go to site, what we can do when we go to site, what to do while we're digging the hole, excavating, what to do while we're working in the hole, and then backfilling. So let's look at those one by one. Before you go to site, you can do what I will call a desktop top survey. A desktop survey is where you ask companies, have you got a water pipe here? Have you got a sewer? Have you got a gas main? Or a hydrocarbon line, perhaps running from Mina Fahar to the airport, or running from the interior to the coast. You can ask the electricity companies, have you got cables here? And the fiber optics supply network people, have you got fiber optics here? Will I damage them if I dig here? Then to find out about the ground, you can ask, you can do geological surveys, you can do site investigations, you can ask your neighbors what's the ground like. And they will tell you, well, this is a, a rocky area, or there's usually groundwater in this area, or we have an area where there are holes, voids, which collapse. And you can even use Google Maps. So you can do finding out before you leave your office. Then you need to inspect the site. You need to actually physically go to the site. When you get there, try to find people who've lived in the area a long time, the old people. Can you tell me about any excavations done in your area? What was the ground like? Did they have any problems? Were there voids? Why do you scorpions, whatever? Ask them. Then go looking. Look for manholes, look for marker posts, look for signboards. Because people who bury their services, their pipes and their cables, they put signs because they don't want them damaged. So look for them. If you look at the ground and you see a line on the ground, is it the edge of somebody's football field? Or is it because someone dug a trench, put a pipe in and then backfilled it again, maybe a year ago or 10 years or 20 years ago? If there's a straight line, think to yourself, there might be something buried there. And don't just look inside and around your site, but go 100 metres out, all round, looking for these posts and markers and signboards. And then use a cable avoidance tool, a CAT scan, which you can see in the picture. So the CAT scan will make a different noise when it um, detects a cable underground. And then you'll know there's a cable there, and you can mark it. Before you start on site, so you're at the site now with your people, have you got an emergency plan? Do you know what you're going to do if somebody gets hurt? If the excavation collapses, you need to have a plan. You can do a toolbox tour where you talk to everybody involved in the process and say, today we're going to dig a hole. What sort of problems do you think we might have? And talk about them with it. 
so that they know and you know what problems there may be and what they need to do to avoid getting hurt. Use the CAT scan again. It's so good to have the scanner be able to pick up live electric cables. Then you need something, materials, to hold up the side. You dig the hole, but it will collapse unless you hold up the sides. You'll need materials for that. Mark where you're going to dig the hole. We're not going to dig it here, we're digging it here because this is the right place and we put markers so we know where that is. And then a depth indicator, something that says how deep do you have to go. We don't want to dig it too deep because then we'll have to fill it up again unnecessarily. So let's get these things right before we start work. While you're excavating, think. Think, think, think. Watch. If there's any doubt in your mind that there might be a cable or a pipe, dig it by hand, carefully. Don't get a JCB in, an excavator in, machine in to dig. Go carefully looking for it by hand, because if you find it, much better to find it gently by hand than with an excavator that will rip up the pipe. When you're digging, you may, if you're in a city particularly, come across some concrete in the excavation. This wants to make you think, why is there concrete there? Is it because somebody's put something in there before and they're protecting a service like a pipe or a cable underneath? You need to check carefully by hand digging. Next thing is, where are we putting this material that comes out of the hole? Where are we going to put it? I call that the spoil that's coming out, the excavated material. You need to put it in a pile somewhere. But it mustn't be too close because this is the excavation and we put it near the excavation, it will fall into the excavation or cause the sides to collapse, which could kill somebody. So think, where can you put the spoil heap safely, maybe a distance away, 5-10 metres away. Then the last one is we need some barriers and signage so that people will not fall into our excavation. So this is what it might look like in theory. I have a picture showing an excavation with the sides, what we call battered, cut but at an angle, 45 degrees typically. And then they've got a handrail. They've got a handrail on one side of the picture because it would confuse the picture otherwise. But there's a handrail and there's a ladder down into the excavation. The ladder is tied and it's easy to transfer from the ground level down the ladder to the bottom of the excavation where you're going to do the work. An alternative is to have vertical sides of the excavation and you hold them up with trench sheets, that's the middle picture, but the trench sheets themselves can get pushed in, so you have to have props and wailings and other bits of material to keep the trench sheets open so that it stays open and you can work in the trench. Another one with lots of wood involved is uh, on the other picture and you'll notice that there's a, a heavy piece of wood going across the excavation with a sling around it. And that sling is holding up a pipe. So they knew they had a pipe, they carefully excavated around the pipe, put the sling in place before they dug the rest of the hole. So the pipe did not move and did not break because of the hole, because of the excavation. This is what it might look like in reality. You can see the ground is difficult to dig in places, it's hard and it's broken up. You can imagine that that the ground could be wet and slippery. So what they have in the picture here, the main piece of the equipment, is what we call a drag box. A drag box is a box that is strong enough, as it is in the picture, for people to go down there safely and it will hold up the sides of the excavation. So the excavator will dig the hole and then pull the drag box along and the people will be adding the lengths of pipe inside the drag box but the people working on this pipe will stay in the box. They will not be in the trench unless they're in the box. And the drag box has got a handrail on one side, it's got a platform, and the ladder is on the side of the picture. But the ladder will be put in place to go down the hole to do the seals around the peat sections of pipe. But the key message is we're holding up the sides of the excavation so it doesn't collapse and kill people. Now, while you're in the hole, you have to keep alert. The excavation may be open for a few hours or a few weeks. 
You certainly should check your excavation every day because things can happen. Maybe the track sheets, which I've got in the picture there, could move. If they're moving, you need to check the support. You um, also want to think about the barriers. Are the signs and the fence around the excavation still there to protect the public? But the ground may leak water. There may be water from the ground that comes into the excavation, which might make it less safe. Or there may be gas leaked. Maybe because of your excavation, you disturbed the pipe that was nearby, the pipe has cracked a bit, and the gas is coming into your excavation. You need to think about these things. And finally, we need to backfill and make good and make safe. Backfilling is exactly that. We put material back into the hole. We may put, um, if there's a pipe, we may put clean sand around it to support the pipe uniformly. We won't put the material we dug up because it might have sharp stones in it, which when we compact it, will damage the pipe. So we put the sand material in, we surround the pipe and bury the pipe with good sand. And then if it's a gas pipe, like in the big picture, then we'll put a tape on top so that people excavating in the future will come to the yellow tape first, dig up the tape, and know that there's a gas pipe underneath. And then we must fill up the rest of the hole properly, compacting it as we go, and then we put marker posts and signs so people know there's a gas cable here, or an electric cable, as I have in the small picture. And when we've done that, then we put this information about where the pipe is, or where the electric cable is, on the drawings, so that, or in the computer model, so that in the future people know exactly at this place is where the cable is, exactly at this place is where the pipe is, and not just here, but how deep it is as well. Thank you. You can follow us on um, Instagram, and Twitter, and LinkedIn, and Facebook.